Hey everyone, Eric Watson here for the Twitter player of games, writer, bird recorder videos, and tabletop role playing aficionado. Welcome to the what day is it? Thursday edition of my bi weekly behind the scenes DM only live stream crafting the deep. It is Thursday, right? In which I build right and prepare for our next session of Call from the Deep. If you're playing characters, got Wild Mox Sabro Toro. The stream is not meant for you and will be full of spoilers, but for the rest of you, uh, welcome, except for you, CT, because apparently you're not caught up on the session. Yeah, I guess there will be spoilers here. It's crafting. <laughs> and I just said there'll be spoilers. We stream my D&D sessions live on YouTube every Friday. You can join our official Discord server with invite link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out patreon.com slash roguewatson for our campaign. We use Roll20 for streaming. I use OBS Studio. It's been a busy week. Stop me if I've said that before. Uh, we literally got a pool put in yesterday. Uh, a partially buried, nice version of above ground pool, I guess. Uh, where they had to get a skid steer back there and I had to tear apart part of my fence, the whole kit and caboodle. So my backyard is an absolute construction war zone and we've been filling up this pool since about 3 p.m. yesterday. We shut off the water overnight because we did some calculations like we measured it at one point and then we measured it again in like a couple hours and said, okay, it goes this many inches in a couple hours. So then, you know, do we need to have it run all night or can we just run it during the morning when we wake up and then by the time they get back in the afternoon to do the backfill and stuff, it'll be high enough for all of that. And unfortunately, next week, we're supposed to get the concrete put in, but uh, the weather is supposed to be hot garbage next week, very thunderstormy and rainy. So that's going to be slightly delayed. So things are going to continue being a bit messy in the yard. Tis the season for a lot of stuff going on. Uh, in terms of call from the deep, though, we are probably not quite in the Sawagan stronghold yet. Oh, I also in uh, this is relevant. I had to, so I mentioned I had to take apart part of my fence uh, so they could get their skid steer back in the backyard to do the digging, to do the partial. They literally dug like a two foot hole to sink part of this pool in the yard. Um, and uh, who has two thumbs and cut through the fiber optic internet line? This jackass right here. <laughs> Didn't even know it. I did it, of course, until there was just a severed cord which somebody had put right near the fence post that I took out so I was without uh, internet for about half a day until they could get the tech out here to rerun another line probably like the third line we've had in here because we had somebody else cut our line before and they were doing uh, irrigation where a sprinkler system worked back there it's been a nightmare we have like so many lines running through our yard now it's it's gross uh, like buried in various places so but uh, the good news is, as much as I fell behind on work, I did D&D prep, basically, because I technically don't need to be, like, online, I guess. I use Google Docs, and Google Docs, you know, you can sort of work offline with Google Docs. So that's what I did. I did a bunch of D&D uh, prep. Uh, and that kind of allowed me to flesh out this continuation of the beginning of the Sawagan Stronghold adventure, in which I'm kind of pulling elements of uh, danger at Dunwater to where I actually, you know, added it to this campaign a few weeks ago, um, basically pulling the some of the characters from there and just the concept of the lizard folk tribe uh, not being the enemy here. It's the it was a twist in the adventure, but in mine, it's they kind of know ahead of time that they've already they've already received the information from their Triton NPC ally that the lizard folk have been attacked by the Sawagan and the Sawagan have kind of taken over their lair. But they don't really know exactly where it is, and they don't know any other, like, intel about what's going on. So I encourage them to pull up to the nearby uh, castle, which is Thornhold. I'm actually going to go to the Sword Coast map here. So we are here. And there they will meet with uh, Miri's mom, Lady Mara Greycastle. And get some more information about the attack. Uh, although they only know pieces of the information they met with the lizard folk. Uh, the lizard folk did end up. So we talked about on Monday my confusion over the specific location of the Sawagan Stronghold dungeon and how the party is actually supposed to access it. Because I feel like the. Uh, text is not very helpful on this there's only like a line or two in terms of how the party's actually supposed to get to this location I don't know if i can pull it up uh, on roll 20 which i should have had ready to go but 
um, the, the, this doesn't make any sense. That there's like bridges and causeways and stuff because the island has sunk since then. And I don't think the Sawagan would be doing that, wanting to connect it to the mainland. So the way I'm figuring is this island stronghold uh, was connected to maybe several other islands and then those islands eventually like they had like natural bridge causeways like the just like i guess a combination of bridges and just land is that what a causeway is i don't know all my fucking nautical terms but like some piece of land that like connects islands which i guess no longer makes them an island i don't know <laughs> the monster island is actually a peninsula was it simpsons joke um but i I think because the island sunk by the Sawagan magically, uh, that's no longer the case. It's no longer connected. So maybe when the lizard folk fled, some of them, and I'm going to really do it like this, these people got conquered pretty badly and they lost, you know, at least 50% of their entire tribe during this attack. Uh, they were able to flee to the mainland, to the swamp, and then make their way up to the Thornhold. Uh, castle, which is there. So, but then at some point, the island began sinking as the uh, Sawagan were able to conduct this ritual. Where exactly to put their token? Is it up here? Is it down here? I don't know. We'll do it like here. And thus, the uh, lizard folk have nobody would be able to access the island from the surface now because the island has sunken in and that means that what what used to be that top level uh this uh, uh ledge up here at number one is i believe now at the water's level so this used to be a very high view and the whole thing i believe is a hundred feet tall which is something else i looked up because the uh, the there's a there's a third level room. The arena is sixty feet tall. So if the arena is sixty feet tall, it means this entire level has to be at least sixty feet below level two, right? Because level there's no like dome for the arena to squeeze through. It's like the entire level two is on top of level three, and level three goes all the way up to sixty feet with the arena. So logically, that means level three is technically sixty feet. And then I believe level two, it says at one point, one of the distances is 30 feet in the biggest rooms. Because it does mention ceiling height somewhere. Okay, there's the causeway. Cause, the stone causeway extends 190 feet from the coast of the ledge of area one, which doesn't make any sense unless I'm missing something because the island has sunk since then. So how the fuck would there be a stone causeway from the ledge of... Area one, if when the Sawagan moved in, they sunk the island down. Like significantly. Like they sunk it uh you know 90% because each level is not the same height. That first level, I believe, is 20 feet. I'm trying to find where it says. Uh the okay, small cave 80 feet below the double doors lead to area 61. So there you go. That's actually so there's 80 feet between third level and first level. And I think 60 of that is level three, and I guess 20 of that is level two? I thought it was 30. Shoot, where does it talk about? One of these areas, it does talk about the damn ceiling. Ah, uh, where is it? It's under Sawagan Stronghold. Yeah, here we go. All corridors are 15 feet high. All the rooms are 20 feet high except for areas 37, 41, and 42, which is all these major like temple and throne room areas at level two are 30 feet high. And then area 60, which is the arena, uh, or sorry, area 53 is the arena, which is 60 feet high. So level three has got to be 60 feet high. That's That math doesn't actually add up then. 60 feet high at level three, but that means level two is 30 feet high. That's 90 feet. So how is it that there's 80 feet? Uh, I'm making it go insane. <laughs> Am I crazy? Like, 
just because I don't think it has to be exact, but I need to know like generally how deep everything is. So in other words, this ledge used to be 80 feet, I guess is what we're saying, above the water, this, this ledge number one which is where under mission begins this right here. So this, I, and it was facing the sea is also what I was reading. <laughs> uh, number one is facing the sea. And then the hidden entrance, uh, area 61 is also facing the sea, but I don't think it used to always, I think it used to be stairs going up to level two or something. Maybe the stairs to the throne room. And then level three, I think down here at the barracks, used to then be, I think, the main entrance before the island was sunk. Because this would be the big, it just, and it, it feels like a big entrance, right? It's like this huge, I don't know what it's, I think it's a barracks now. But this used to be on the surface of the water facing the coast. But since the island has sunk, it's it's still it hasn't turned so it's still facing the coast but it's now 80 feet below water this is now an entrance that's 80 feet below water i'm not quite certain this was always an entrance i think it used to be stairs maybe it's broken up into an entrance and then level one i don't think was ever an entrance then and it used to just be like a cool view like an outer you know, opening that you, you had like this awesome view of the sea, I think, like 80 feet above the water. So there was no, en there was no proper entrance here. But now it's the, it's on the surface of the water. It's the, the island has sunk so much that this, what used to be this huge cliff, essentially balcony of stone has sunken down into the water and now acts as kind of their main port of call if they need to be uh, on the surface, I guess. But the island is currently still sinking. I think that's the idea. Like they've whatever magic they've got, and I like the idea that it's not dramatic. It's like a gradual sinking um, because of whatever spell they've got going on, which I may use. Like the queen, lizard folk queen, is like a she's I don't know attached to some ritual sacrifice, and the players have to save her too. That's what all I'm trying to paint this picture because this dungeon was needlessly confusing and didn't have a lot of those details I was looking for in terms of like basic entrances, where they are, what the height differences are. I kind of had to hop back. Oops, sorry. I just banged my water into the mic. Ding. I think that's what I've figured out. If somebody has run this adventure and I'm completely wrong about any of these things, then please let me know. But that's what I'm trying to figure out. It doesn't make any sense if there's a bridge going to number one, for example. Um... Or that there was ever a bridge, if there was ever a bridge anywhere, it would be down here in area 60 uh, that used to, and that's what I'm kind of picturing. This area 60, I think, used to be the main entrance on the third level, because again, that would have been the first bottom level. But now it's sunken, you know, deep into the water. And then I don't know how much information to give them about uh, if they know that 61 is actually open to the sea, or if it used to be like stairs or something. Because if you look at the crude map, and I, I've got to figure this out, even though they're not going to probably get to the dungeon yet. I think I need to figure this out because they will start learning this information, especially once they get to uh, the lizard folk and talk to them. The lizard folk would then be able to give them this very useful information is the intel about the island. Now, they wouldn't necessarily know all the updates that the Sawagan have done. And I think the Sawagan have supposedly created more rooms and... I, I think just kind of updated the place, you know, changed the, uh, maybe replaced the curtains, uh, you know, done some, maybe painted the door a different color, those kind of, those kind of changes, some land, some nice landscaping, but uh, they should be able to get a basic layout. And the big change, of course, is going to be, yeah, here's what it looked like for us, but now the island is, I wanted to say, you know, two thirds underwater because two of the three levels are underwater, but part of my journey in researching this whole dungeon was that each level is not the same height. In fact, they're very, very different. I'm not even sure. I guess the first, this top level is 20 feet high. The second level I thought is 30 feet high, but I'm not sure the math actually works out, but it says some of these main rooms are 30 feet high. And then the third level 
This arena is 60 feet high. I think if it doesn't, maybe need to read more about the arena. The arena is kind of confusing because it has like a bottom layer and then there's like 30 feet and then there's the actual uh, like stands which are well above the arena. So I don't know if part of the part of this is sunken then or if like the bottom of the arena is actually bottom with the other rooms. I think it is. I, I'm probably just overthinking this and it doesn't need to be this freaking complicated, but I do need to have like some details in play. I missed a bunch of maths. Because it's this is kind of important information to to tell the players. So right now they're going to get some information from the Thornhold folks, but not a lot. They'll basically be told like where the lizard folk are, which is uh, the lizard folk refugees were able to make it to Thornhold, but like you know tensions flared between even the factions of the lizard folk as well as the people of Thornhold, and it wasn't meant to be a long term stay. So I, I'm just saying like after a week, the lizard folk just left. And like, you know, some folks will blame other folks for the reason of that, but they, you know, maybe those folks left on their own accord. Maybe they were kind of, I don't know, uh, strongly encouraged to leave. Like they weren't, no, you know, and some people may say they were kicked out. It's going to be kind of a tense diplomatic situation for everybody to deal with. But the lizard folk left, they're no longer in Thornhold, and they went out into the swamp, which uh, of course did concern some of the people of Thornhold, but like they're also mainly concerned now about the fact that uh, they had, I would say, good relations with the lizard folk. Those are folk were probably uh, maybe like even trade partners because it doesn't mention this tribe is is more, I don't know, worldly and pragmatic and not uh, hostile to their neighbors. Um, but it wouldn't be like they were necessarily allies either. They were like you know they'd show up every once in a while. They would trade, maybe give some information, but it was kind of a Better than like a frosty Cold War situation, but not like an alliance either. Um, and then the Thornhold people will be very much on watch because like those folks just all got conquered by Sawagan. So they were, you know, not keen on having these refugees in there because they're like gearing up for war. But the Sawagan have not attacked them or the mainland since. Instead, they were pretty content at just taking over this base. And then they've seen a lot of comings and goings around the Sword Coast. Maybe they just haven't felt like committing troops to what is basically, even though they're technically a coastal fortress, um, the Thornhold Castle is actually very uh, impregnable and not connected directly to the sea, so that would be a huge advantage for them against the Sawagan. I mean, the Sawagan, uh, Thornhold people probably say, like, they probably realize that. Now, they also have, they've probably lost, like, a ship or two that, you know, whatever little naval power they had were uh, destroyed uh, pretty swiftly, and the beach was ransacked, but they can say that they never advanced uh, into the mainland themselves. That's pretty much the only updates they'll get from the Thornhold people, although it'll also be a safe place for the party uh, to rest if they need to rest. Then they'll be going into the swamp, and that's where we're going to execute the uh, Katablapas fight, uh, which is this encounter here after some survival checks. Uh, they'll be able to come across the lizard folk fighting a bunch of Catablopus uh, calves, which are for Monster Manual Expanded. And then the adult will rise up and make it a little bit more of a crazy big fight. And the story here is lizard folk are just hunting for food. They found one of these calves. They tried to quickly take it and bring it back to the tribe. But then more calves kept rising out of the uh, swamp and kind of causing them problems and being dangerous. And then by the time the party comes, this adult will rise up out of the swamp, and then they would be in this whole hunting party would probably get slaughtered, if not for the party. And then Vyth is going to be one of the uh, scale shields. This guy's from uh, the final enemy. Uh, he'll be their primary contact and uh, lead them to the actual tribe. And the tribe, which this is an idea we came up with on the last crafting stream, is the queen is not with the tribe. And I think this is going to be the key to making some more interesting drama with the Lizard Folk tribe. The queen, which is mentioned in Danger at Dunwater, Queen Alphacant, uh, has in fact been captured by the Sawagan. So we can put another prisoner. We might need to create another prisoner section, although they've got one in level three and one in level one. But I think the one in level one is um, 
empty basically so we may have to flush out level one again or just put uh, we may put the queen just in the temple and maybe li literally have her be part of the dark ritual and like it's siphoning off her i don't know noble energy or something to uh that would be a cool twist like they think it's some device that's uh lowering the uh dungeon but it's some dark ritual involving the actual queen in this attached to some device or something i don't know um so my, she might be in the temple and then in her stead is going to be Sariv, which I love that name, who is in danger at Dunwater and is uh, mentioned somewhere uh, in this adventure, I guess. Is it not a sidebar or something? Let's see, Sariv, there we go. He's got his own token and everything. Um, he's an elderly kind of advisor. Lizardfolk, I'm not going to paint him like an evil, like, scheming politician or anything, but he is of the mind that the queen has been killed and their uh, lair has been fully conquered and that the only way they can survive and move forward is if they have a new queen and they just rebuild uh, in the swamp, basically. So that's going to be his idea. And, of course, one of his uh, children, his, like, eldest daughter is going to be uh, basically trying to nominate her to be the queen because there's like a power vacuum right now. And then Vyth, who is the other, uh, the lizard folk they'll meet at the Catablopus fight, uh, him and some others are of the opinion that the queen is still alive. He maintains that he saw her get like psychically attacked and knocked out and not killed and that honor demands they mount a counterattack and rescue her, which he does kind of admit as a bit of a suicide mission on his team. But that's how we talked about how I wanted to make kind of this inner faction, just interesting role-playing dilemma for the players to deal with for the lizard folk. And that will be uh, kind of the thing not to deal with. And also the lizard folk will be, I'll, I'll very much play it up as like, it's mostly elderly and children who were able to escape. Like the tribe is in really bad shape. Uh, most of their like able-bodied fighters were killed in the attack, and uh, you know even Vyth would like admit that like yeah it's kind of a it, kind of a suicide mission, and I I don't know whether the lizard folk would know about the island sinking or not. It's possible one of them did scout back to the island and they just looked at it and were like horrified to see it like wait a minute the island's like sinking in the water. The Thornhill people would know because they have a clear view of the island, so they would be able to see that that was happening. And I guess Elizabeth didn't leave Thornhold till like after a week, I said, so maybe they would get some idea that that was happening. Uh, so they may actually know that information and give that to the players. Hey, CMG. Nate, yeah, I'm gonna... The table pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying, Captain Mike. It's, uh, it's not my... It's, it's not my best word <laughs> I uh, I still don't like that word it's it's so awkward to say I don't know the top layer 20 feet high level 2 30 feet high and level 3 60 feet high the dungeon should be 110 feet high from the lowest point to the highest right Michael I think that's what we were figuring out but but does this math check out because or maths it's it's math for uh i I, re I realized years ago that americans say math even though technically it's short for mathematics and i totally get why maths is the more proper abbreviation but like everything we butcher it um it does say that the entrance of i have too many tabs open of uh the level 61 is 80 feet, right? Where the fuck did I see that? <laughs> Trying to find all the information in various journals is painful. Is it under Mission Begins? Uh, yes. The first set is double doors, the end of a causeway. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. There's a causeway here. The island has sunken. The second is a small cave 80 feet below the double doors that lead to area 61. So that means it says level three is 80 feet below level one, even though that math doesn't seem to work for me because 
I thought it was 60 feet for level 3 and 30 feet for level 2 because there were some rooms in level 2 that were 30 feet tall. So to me, that would mean it had to be 90 feet. The whole thing is somewhere around 20 feet, or sorry, 20 feet, uh, 100 feet tall. Approximately. I don't know if the lizard folk would know that exact measurement. And the south side of the island, 80 feet below the surface, that leads to area 60. I'm already encouraging, planning on encouraging the players to not use that top opening. In my opinion, lizard folk would have never used this as an entrance because, again, it would have been, whatever we said, 80 feet above the water. And I think it's supposed. I don't. Where did I see that? That was facing the sea. I could have sworn it was facing. Somewhere I saw that area one was facing the sea, and it was actually area sixty that was facing the coast. So I think I thought that would have been the main entrance that they used. There are any feet from the coast ledge of area one. Yeah. Does that make any sense? This, yeah, the whole thing is just terribly confusing. So I think I just need to stop trying to figure out what the designers wanted and instead just figure out what I want. <laughs> Cause it's my fucking game. And we need to just make a decision here, an executive decision and figure out uh, some rough maths on where everything ends up. But I think what makes sense to me is what I said at the beginning, which is number one was facing the sea. It was a giant picturesque balcony that had no other entrances. It was just kind of a cliff. And now it happens because the island is sunken all the way down into the water. At least the bottom two levels are completely underwater. Literally, they make it to the stairs in area 19 and there's like water lapping at the stairs. So that tells me that like all of level two, including the ceiling is underwater. Uh, none of level one is underwater, though. So that means level one, I believe, is only 20 feet high. So there's only 20 feet of interior island. Now, the island itself may be bigger than that, but in terms of what's usable for tunnels, there's 20 feet showing, which is not a lot. But maybe it, I think it's supposed to be some kind of mountainous looking thing with maybe more crap on top. So the whole thing may be you know, 40, 50, 60 feet tall still on the top. But in terms of usable space, only 20 feet. And this side wouldn't even be seen from uh, the coast then. You'd have to go around to the other side facing the sea to see this entrance, which the I, the other thing is I may just let the players explore around. It just gets dangerous because I plan on having patrols everywhere. Um, but that would be like a main thoroughfare for the Sawagan, sort of if they had to use non-water areas, but I think most of them are just using the water. So they would go in and out of this area 60, which actually faces the coast, but is like 80 feet below uh, the water. And then this one would be area 61. I I'm planning on that being maybe, maybe it was even broken a bit when the island lowered or during the attack and opened up. I I'm, I'm not quite clear if area 61 was always meant to be open it, I, it doesn't make sense to me because it's not, it doesn't look like a proper entrance, right? This doesn't, it seems like this would be like a forgotten, in fact, I think if we look at the, uh, what am I trying to look at? It's not under art handouts. It's just under handouts, I guess. There we go. Player handouts. The crude map they give, um, I take it back. This isn't, this doesn't have stairs here, does it? Trying to think if it looked like stairs. There definitely wasn't a dungeon here. This was like a room, a room, and it's showing an opening with water. So I guess it was. I guess it was always open. But I mean, look at the bottom one. And my my overlay cuts it off. But this was definitely, I think, the main entrance down here. Sort of floors, areas, layer, but not necessarily over each other like an ant hill. Yeah. That makes sense, Nate, but also this is top-down D&D and we've got to do it by, like, floors and rooms, I think. Or we could go insane. <laughs> Lowest point of first level will be 90 at 90 feet. 
And if the water level is at 100 feet, it would mean the first level would be 10 feet submerged in the water. Which is not the case, I think. I think we're close. The first level is not in water at all. It's completely above water. But as soon as you enter the stair case, there's like water lapping. So it's like right below this first level, which this first level is 20 feet high. So I think, I think the easiest thing to do is to say the whole thing is a hundred feet the, of usable dungeon space is 100 feet tall and the bottom level can still be 60. And I think the other levels have to be 20 each. And the bottom level is only 60 because of the arena. Every other room is still about 20 feet. And then if we need to cheat and be like, oh, we're in the temple, how high is this room? I can say 30 feet and hopefully no one will notice the non-Euclidean physics being used here. Because, <laughs> yeah, there's some kind of... Uh, and everything's not quite even, I guess. But then that would also work out math-wise for level 3 being... 80 feet below level one, I think. If that makes sense. Good alien base of area 61. Yeah. So was area, was area 61 always, always an entrance? It's, I think it says it was an old guard post, old guard room. Not been altered by the Sawagan. They're roughly hewn from rock and display. None of the precision of the character's Sawagan construction. I think they even said they sealed it up. But then it got broken open when they tried to put that giant eel in the in the cell. I think that's all the information I have for... A small cave, 80 feet below, at least area 61. So I think the lizard folk would be able to tell them, okay, this is what we suggest. So first the players, when they meet with the lizard folk, they'll have that little bit of drama where like some of them don't want to commit anything to the fight and others kind of do, but the players will be like, hey, we have motivation, we have the means. Um, and then, but if they can convince Sariv to help them, then, you know, to commit resources to help get them inside because... The Sawagan and the Thornhill people can tell them, like, or not Sawagan, the lizard folk can tell them, like, yeah, the place is swarming with Sawagan. Like, even getting close would be kind of crazy unless you have some kind of plan that can, you know, distract them or something. Um, also, I thought it'd be fun to, for them to properly convince the uh, non attacking faction, the Sarif faction, to help them and commit more of the lizard folk resources. Maybe they can do a fun duel because that's something I've really enjoyed doing in a lot of our D and D campaigns, and I think the players have really enjoyed that as well. Where uh, one player character gets to duel another NPC in kind of an honorable, non-lethal duel, and like the others could like buff them or do other things. I don't know, but uh, in order to like convince you know a people or or win a bout or or something. So in this case, it will be. Uh, Sarif suggesting that they fight the person he wants to nominate for the next queen just as a way of proving their medal and proving their uh, cause and everything else just kind of how those folk like solve disputes in this case and maybe uh, maybe Vyth has refused to fight her because uh, maybe he thinks he's not strong enough to beat her but he's still like and, and they haven't quite gotten to that point yet because there's like still a tribe in mourning but it's getting to that, that tension level where like they really have to start figuring this out uh, and I think there's a stat block I can use that would be uh, pretty appropriate. I don't know. I think sub chief is too weak. Yeah, CR. Well, CR three is not horrible, but I don't want to use a spellcaster. I think you need to use a. It really works if you have martial versus martial. I think once you start having a spellcaster, like it gets a little crazy. Like one person cast whole person, and then the fight's over. Um, I think it was Lizard Queen was what I was looking at. Which is tricky because it was not 
Lizard Folk Queen. I think it was Lizard Queen. That's why I had trouble finding it. Yeah, Lizard King or Queen in the Monster Manual. So this is kind of like the boss level Lizard Folk guy. I don't know why. Yeah, it says Lizard King instead of Lizard Folk. Uh, CR4 with 78 hit points. Does an extra 3d6 damage and gains temporary hit points equal to the extra damage dealt. This could actually be a pretty nasty one-on-one -on -one, uh, fight. But the players are level 7. So it would be one seventh level player character versus a CR4 lizard folk uh, with multi-attack wielding a trident. I think it would be pretty fun. And they wouldn't have to necessarily win this bout either. It would be non-lethally. And uh, magic would be uh, not allowed, but the players would be able to use more of their special abilities, I guess, which obviously kind of limits them to uh, Gottwald or Mac. But I, I don't know. I'm kind of liking this idea for this kind of one-on-one duel. I'll have to come up with another uh, map that would be uh, a, little, a little like arena thing surrounded by lizard folk. And if they do fight honorably, whether they win or lose, I think that would convince... Sorry, like, and maybe the players will do other things that can make it, like, you know, grudgingly uh, make them more accepted. But the idea here is they don't necessarily have to win this fight to win the approval. They just have to fight well, essentially. But I like the idea of the of the duels, so I think I was going to roll with that if I could find a kind of a good arena swampy map I can use. Let's see if we got Swamp Shacks, Swamps, Swamps 2. Let's see what Swamp Shacks gives us. This would be, although I don't think the Lizard Folk would have this much accommodations. Uh, they wouldn't have a whole village set up necessarily. So maybe I don't want Swamp Shacks, maybe I just want Swamp. Sorry, I've got a new one. Modular swamps, swamps. Let's open swamp and swamp two. Swamp two, swampy boogaloo. Some kind of swampy thing I can use as a little fight area, something like that. Uh, smuggler's camp is. Not too bad. Some I don't know if they'd have crates with them, but oh, the mound would be perfect if there wasn't a tree in the middle of it. Definitely not a road. Oh, maybe they made their. Well, I, I mentioned they had a cave. Maybe they could have like old ruins instead of a cave. Hmm. I might actually change my description. I was describing it as they had. Uh, they found a cave, but maybe an old castle ruins would be more appropriate. Could use these sinking ruins instead. That's kind of a neat map. It's from Quick Encounters Swamps. Let's close that one out. So all of this is a giant fact-finding expedition that the players are still going to be on. For getting all their intel. And I still have not come up with a plan or solution that's really up to the players in terms of how they get into it. I do want to give them the information of like, here's what the layout is versus well, via those handouts. And, uh, you know, Elizabeth can even suggest like, you know, this top area is probably well guarded in area one. This bottom area is our, was the main entrance that we had. And it's now, uh, it's probably going to be well guarded. There's this third entrance that was, uh, facing the sea that we use when we had to take like boats out and stuff. Um, and, but it was, a, you know, kind of a small area. We hadn't ever really widened the tunnels. Um, and uh, that would be the area they would suggest basically is sneaking in that way. So they can give the player, they can suggest to the players, here's your point of entrance, just so they don't have to do that part of it. But the players will still have to figure out how do we get to that point? Because and I like the idea of it being like 200 feet off the coast. Um, they still have to get there, and even just trying to get anywhere near, they were attacked by Sawagan, you know, via their big ship. So clearly they can't just take their ship and park it right up next to the the main area, and I think it does say that 
in one of these things. It says that the entrance is uh now I'm trying to find the same information again. Uh, the guards who are rowing are sailing the keelboat and will come anywhere near within several hundred feet of the island. They prefer to drop the characters in their rowboats on the eastern edge of the area. If the characters ask, they will sail on the south side of the island, always giving a wide berth. The characters can disembark anywhere. But the difference between the, the one that's written and the one I'm using is the one that's written is all the swagger are just inside this entire base, not outside at all. So it doesn't seem like getting there uh, is a problem for the written adventure. Whereas for mine, I think it would be a big obvious problem that the players have to get through this area that's very dangerous and literally crawling with enemies. So I, I don't have a solution for that. I'm not even going to suggest anything. Like the Thornhole people would be like, this is crazy. The lizard folk, even the people who want to rescue the queen would be like, this is kind of a suicide mission. I'm hoping the players have some way between all their crazy items and magical abilities and their hubris that they can come up with some kind of fun plan that will get them there hopefully with a minimal amount of risk uh, because I will probably have to come up with something if the plan seems kind of stupid or foolish and maybe they do get attacked by a Sawagan patrol. They will have access to their small rowboats from their ship or they can just swim. Uh, I mean, I think like Mac took like pass without trace, although I think we even talked about if that's something that even works underwater. I mean... Stealth, you can technically roll a stealth check underwater. It's supposed to be, once you start going in there, it's dark. Uh, the Swagon do have dark vision, but I don't know if it's easy to sneak <laughs> sneak up underwater. I mean, sneaking up underwater is a very good move in stealth games if your enemy isn't underwater, right? It's like a classic move is to go under the water. Uh, but if your enemy is actually almost all underwater, then suddenly you kind of lose that benefit. If anything... Going from the air might be the most... Well, no, because that's also pretty obvious if you're, like, hang gliding over, like, clouds or something. I guess you could try to go at night. I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to see what the players come up with, how they utilize all their allies in trying to get to this island. But it's... I, I It's just a problem that they have to surmount. And the... The penalty was going to have to be them being attacked by a Swagon patrol, I think, and softening them up, which is not a penalty I like to use because it's more work for everybody involved and slows the game down, but I think it's the only thing that makes any kind of sense here. All right, so we want to use... Uh, what is it? So quick, quick Encounters Maps. Quick Encounters Swamps Sinking Ruins. Let's try to find that. If I can get off my fun little dual thing. I think that's fun. It doesn't really count as a full combat encounter. Let's make a new page. And yes, we have amazing, awesome, new final enemy Swagon Stronghold maps courtesy of uh, patron... And fan of the show, Bear Gardner, has got his own Patreon you need to check out. Should be in the description. Um, but if it's not... Oh, no, it is in the description. Good. Uh, really great map art that we plan on using. I think we'll end up using level 3 first. Unless the party is just like, no, fuck it, we're going on that level 1 entrance. But that level 1 entrance is going to be guarded. Alright, so let's go here. Let's go to map. It's called Sinking Ruin. So I may actually change my description. I, I sent in my written description. They had a cave somewhere in the swamp, but maybe these ruins will actually work out a little bit better. Let's uh, rotate this just for funsies. Excellent. Default map size works out well, and that's where the the Sawagan tribe is currently hanging out at, and then or I keep saying Sawagan, Jesus. The lizard folk are hanging out in here. And we can populate this. I guess we can use some dynamic lighting and really turn this into a bit of a battle map. Daylight, a little bit darker. 
Uh, go swamp. So that'll go here. This is all part of this quest arc and a precursor to getting to the actual dungeon. And I realized, like, oh, I need to throw too many things on there, but I can't help it. I think it's going to be fun. Dynamic lighting, draw. Some walls. There. Slapping some stuff together. There. There. More dynamic lighting. It's hard to do ruins though, because you're like, is there a full wall here? Is there not? You could say maybe that's actually not a full wall, but this is. These obviously look full, but I'm just going to draw the one line because I'm lazy. Oops. That can be there. Just put that on. Not quite all the way up. Cut it off a little bit over there. Drawing some lines. What do you think they're going to do? When I tell them they have to get inside this area that's crawling with enemy forces and is an island patrolled by aquatic creatures. And they're told that the most the most likeliest unguarded entrance is under the water facing the sea. At all the spots, there's one spot right there. Actually, I may continue to draw this one. And then that one up there. I guess I could do the trees, but there's not a whole lot of big trees out here. All right, so if we want to populate it with some lizards, probably use more of those. Didn't actually roll NPC uh, hit points for these guys, did I? Well, let me copy them first. Uh, use those commoners. And, you know, if I had thought about it and realized, I don't know, I, I did realize, I don't know why I didn't do it. I should have changed the tribe in the pirate Skyhold quest arc to be something other than lizard folk just because we're doing the same damn thing here. I don't, I should have made them like bullywugs or, or something. I mean, even though lizard folks are, uh, Associated with black dragons just because I'm using them heavily again in the next quest arc, which is this one uh, as written in the module. I don't know. It just kind of seems weird that I'm using the same one again. Drag you over there. You've got your own icon, which is cool. So they gave you vision, which is weird. You Gara. And you are Vyth. We've got a few more warriors, but it's going to be mostly commoners, I think. Put some in there. And then where are my commoners at? Search for lizards. Lizard folk commoners. They also have a couple. Oh, they did have a lizard queen and king in here. Okay. Not bad. That's a weird looking art. It looks like a fish art. I don't know about that art. It's not like a lizard folk. It looks like a fish monster. Okay, neither of these look like lizard folk at all. <laughs> they tried. <laughs> Render is some kind of... This isn't actually a giant lizard, though, is it? Lizard folk. Render goes terrifying changes during a day long, which were formed by a shaman. Render's claws grow long and hard as steel. Its frame enlarges, and its timber becomes even more ferocious. So it's like a monstrous version of a lizard folk, but not a giant lizard. So also, I think that's 
not a great token. We could put some uh, giant lizards in here if we needed to. There, we'll use these guys. So you get to represent the children and the elderly. So there should be there should be a lot of tokens here. I mean, they don't have to be here at once. Two, three, six, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. We'll put uh, Sarib over there, I think. Uh, I guess we could. I'm. I don't know whether to show them this map when they first arrive. Or wait until the actual duel happens. It is nice to be able to have more scenes to show them versus just talking. And I don't have any kind of artwork to go with this. But I know that you show them a map and they're like, oh shit, there's a fight. Which is not necessarily where I'm going with this. Well, actually, it is where I'm going like, to an extent. Put some guards out here, it looks good. So many lizards. All right, so this will be the guy who escorts them back to the camp, along with, I guess, whichever members of his party survive. And then uh, they'll meet with Sariv in here. There are giant lizards around. I don't know if they have any giant lizards with them. I don't know if it's worth using any of their stat blocks either. Render, Shaman, Subchief. I mean, if they somehow aggro everybody, the party could almost slaughter all these guys. <laughs> like, they're just, they're not in good shape. Yeah, Render should be large. You could do, it's like a Wolverine version of a lizard folk. It's like they go like crazy and get super powerful. It's, it's a neat idea, but I don't know if I have a need for that. So you should be under named creatures. There we go. That's cool. I love these guys' own token. That makes me really want to use a character. He'll be right there. Uh, all the Kent though just has the this token, which is fine. Once I can, I, I might try to find a lizard folk queen token I can use, but I like that idea that she's actually captured that the, the dude is right. Vyth is correct that uh, she was uh, captured by the Sawagan and she did, she's either just kept in a cell or I like the idea that maybe it's somehow her energy, life essence, whatever blood is being used to uh, sink the entire facility. So uh, rescuing her will also stop the island from sinking. I don't know if I'm going to say that the island like starts going back up. It probably doesn't. <laughs> so they're probably kind of screwed in that case. But uh, certainly the Sawagan being gone would be a big bummer. It, it's kind of a, I guess it's a tragic ending for the lizard folk then if it if the sinking is irreversible. But maybe maybe because they're using her energy to sink the island then she can get together with some shamans or something and uh, work her magic. Maybe that's, you know, the, the queens are given some kind of extra magical powers and she can work on on raising the whole thing again. Uh, maybe there's some cool background where like, oh yeah, the, my, my ancestor first came across this island and actually was able to raise it up a little bit from the floor of the ocean and that's how we were able to use it originally. The Swagan wouldn't know that, but they... Or maybe the mind flayers figured it out or something, and it's they could use her power to sink it. So maybe it does have a happy ending if they save the queen uh alive, essentially, rescue her. I think I'm gonna put her in the temple, which is area 37, which is also where we're gonna replace uh the Ma of Sekala, which is a cool creature, but a two-headed shark is also kind of stupid. <laughs> and uh, in my campaign, Call from the Deep, sorry, the 
JVC Perry's campaign that I'm running, um, the Sawagan are being manipulated and controlled and motivated by the Mind Flayers. So they wouldn't actually have a bunch of Sekala shit. They've renounced Sekala, and instead now they're worshiping uh, essentially the Fathomless. But it's through... It, it's, it is very similar to Baldur's Gate. The Absolute, essentially, but the Absolute is actually the... Uh, the Kraken having uh, with the Elder Brain attached to it. It's just that in, my, in the ver main version between this and Baldur's Gate, oh, I, I shouldn't be spoiling Baldur's Gate, sorry. Nah, I forget I said anything. <laughs> I won't go into it. It's not fair for me to spoil Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I haven't even finished the story yet because we're still playing through our co-op campaign, so it's not fair. Why did I just do that? I'm not using this creature. Um, but I'm replacing this creature, I think, with what is a, like a super chul. I believe is in uh, this campaign, but it's like a Mind Flayer version of a Chul, which is what I'm going to place in level 2, and that will act as the liaison. So actually, that temple may be where our final boss fight may end up. I think I started with a U or a Chul or something. Ooh, Chulon, there it is. A Chul implanted with an Illithid Tadpole. Perfect. Uh, CR4 is not quite a good final boss fight to use. But the tricky thing about this dungeon crawl is I don't know. It's not like a traditional, like, you know, room, 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 room. And then, you know, our boss fight. It's a stealth mission. The players are in there to rescue people and to take out the leadership but this, this so they have multiple objectives and one of the objectives is, is to take out several bosses so i can't make i don't think any one particular boss like really crazy high end if i don't want to feel like they have to long rest in the middle of this dungeon and they, you really can't long rest in the middle of an underwater dungeon crawling with bad guys so i think for proper pacing instead you have kind of these mini bosses but spread out in multiple areas and that's what's going to kind of wear down the party's resources, I think. And uh, this guy will not be alone. He'll have several uh, Sabogan Priestesses, which are pretty strong stat blocks from what I remember. They've got Mass Healing Word, Spiritual Weapon, Hold Person, Guiding Bolt, Blast. Those are all solid, solid uh, kind of enemy cleric spells. So we have multi multiple of those CR2s, plus the kind of Super Chul... Uh, the Uchulon. I think there's another kind of Chul somewhere, though. Maybe this isn't the one I'm thinking of. Wasn't there one that literally had a Mind Blast attack? Uh, let me let me actually just search for Chul. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was just the Monster Man expanded version of the Uchulon. It is. Okay. So actually, Call from the Deep has a version of it, which is a CR4. Okay. And then Monster Man Expanded actually has, from Dragon X, has a CR7 version with way more AC, slightly more hit points. Still has the Paralytic Slime. Still has multi-attack, but has actual Mind Flayer Mind Blast, which is pretty nuts. So if I if I wanted to use the the strongest of the boss fights, because I don't think any of the barons or baroness are that CR. Actually, I'm gonna check that. Uh, that would probably be it. Which is even though it's level two, that may be the best place to put a kind of big boss battle because that's the furthest from any of the entrances that you could possibly be. You know, if they if they come in through level three. Too many tabs open. Uh, if they're coming through level 3, through this dungeon entrance, they if they go immediately to the sides, and then they have the stairs going up, they could end up at the side stairs here at level 2, and then they'd still have to go through a good chunk of uh, the second level to get to the temple, and then the throne room, I believe, is up here. So, quickest way in would be to use that entrance 61, get to the dungeon. I would love to put one of the NPCs in the arena, probably that Master Sliver that Matt cares about, have him in the arena to force the players to like deal with that as a thing. Uh, but then level two is probably where they're going to be actually destroying a lot of the leadership. So that'll be their, their multi-phase plan to get in here. But uh, as I mentioned before, I we're not going to get to the Sawagan Stronghold. 
uh, this Friday. I would expect us to finish our meeting at Thornhold, get to the swamp and do these swamp encounters, and then uh, basically get all the information, hopefully get a plan together, maybe even get that plan off. I don't know, depending on how long some of these encounters go. And then we'll finally actually get to the Sawagan Lair uh, with next week's, yeah, next week's session. Mac does have Pass Without Trace. Could use skill checks to avoid patrols while forcing them to use a resource. Yeah, I did talk about how Pass Without Trace is kind of weird at underwater, I think, but mechanics are what they are. Stealth checks versus perception. I will need to I will need to prepare a underwater encounter. The problem is I don't know if the players are going to be in a boat or actually underwater. Like I, that's the nerve wracking thing is with me giving the players the chance to completely come up with their plan of infiltration. Uh, I'm still having to put down maps and tokens and stuff for that. So I'll have to just approximate some kind of water map um, and then try to figure it out from there. Maybe I'll have to do an underwater map and a surface map just to be sure about what exactly they're going to do. And yeah, have at least one chance where there's going to be a patrol coming around um, depend and depending on how good their distraction is or something is the chance they have of slipping past that patrol and actually making it to the entrance. But will that encompasses the party allows them to traverse underwater as a damage distance, gives them a little bit of cloaking being spotted. Oh, yeah, like giving them a thing? No, I'm not going to give them anything. They can figure out what they... They've already got an air bubble that they can work with. It has air stones. They can just separate the stones and that creates a bubble like around them. Like they've got all kinds of tools. I'm not worried about that. I just want them to be able to come up with the plan. I should get back into BG3. Got me too stressed out. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that is going to do it for this Thursday edition of the crafting stream. As always, if you enjoy the content, please do check out patreon.com slash Rogue Watson. Shout out to Planet Patrons, Joe, Will, Thomas, Dan, Brandon, Zenicider, Eclectic, Roleplay, Roll, Christopher, Corey, Big Nut, John F., John L., Eric, Tyler, Nathan, Cap, Crystal, Counselor, Andrew, Daryl, The Reldron, Captain Woody, 79, Stephanie, Andy, Patrick, Jason, Ismail, Amit, Lumpy, Spud, Sharni, David, William, and Amnesiac. And Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper, Grams, Pretty Boy, and Yuma, Did Lizard, Lion, Sam, Adrome, Nathan, Fasica, Tortoise, Scott, Ruffus, Carolyn, Jerry, Glenn, Marcus, and Mark. Thank you all. Very much for your support. I will see you for D&D &D tomorrow. <laughs>